Hi, I'm Sherry. And I'm Hutch. And together with our 1957 vintage camper named Hamlet, we are Freedom in a Can. Now for those of you that follow us, you know that we speak at RV show seminars and other events all across the country. And we get a ton of questions from our audience. And today, we're gonna cover crossing the Canadian border in your RV. So we are on our way to Alaska, which is our 50th state. We just crossed over into British Columbia, which is our eighth border crossing in the last 10 years. Now, a few months ago, we were discussing our travel plans with some fellow RVers who expressed some reservations, apprehensions, and frankly, some misinformation about traveling into Canada. So first off, all of the information that we're gonna share with you today can be found in the video description below. Now keep in mind, this is June of 2022 and information is changing constantly. If you search for Visit Canada to the official government website, which is canada.ca, it'll walk you through everything you need to know for a very smooth border crossing. So this website is gonna introduce you to ArriveCan. That is the free app that is gonna be the portal through which you upload all of your documentation to make an easy border crossing. So it's gonna walk you through uploading your passports, your COVID-19 vaccinations, and also see if you qualify for a vaccination exemption. So just remember that when you're filling out the information on the ArriveCan app, and uploading your documentation and answering those health questions that you need to do that within 72 hours before crossing the border. So let's talk about passports for a minute. There are two different types of passports that you can use to cross into the Canadian border if you're a United States citizen. The first is a traditional passport that you can use anywhere in the world. It costs about $130 plus a $35 processing fee and it's good for 10 years. And that is necessary if you're coming into Canada by airplane. But if you're traveling by land or by sea and coming in via your RV, a car, or a ferry, you can just get a passport card. Now these cost about $30 with a $35 processing fee, also good for 10 years. Now you can get any of this information about passports on the US State Department website, and you can apply for a passport at your county clerk office or even the U.S. post office in your city. So what can you bring with you as you're crossing into Canada? Let's talk about pets, food, alcohol and tobacco, and weapons. When it comes to pets, your dog, your cat, eight months or older, not a problem. They just need to be vaccinated against rabies. But your rabbit, turtle, lizard, your horses, might need a little bit more documentation from an animal veterinarian check it out below. When it comes to food, it's all about volume. You want to make sure it's reasonable amount that you and your family are going to consume while you're traveling. Same is true with alcohol and tobacco. They're just looking for a reasonable amount for your family. What they're trying to do is make sure that you're not trying to avoid import and export taxes for a large quantity of food, alcohol, or tobacco. Now with weapons, we get this question all the time at our seminars as well as at the Canadian border. And the only gun we have is a cock gun. And with our vintage camper, we've had a lot of chances to use it. And the only thing I shoot with is a camera. So there are some weapons that are legal in the US that are not legal in Canada. So make sure you check those resources to see if it falls within that classification. Now for instance, if you're coming to hunt in Canada or traveling through to Alaska, that is some justification for having that hunting rifle. So you just wanna make sure that you store it appropriately and declare it at the border. So what kind of questions are you gonna be asked at the border? Well, they're gonna ask you about your address. They're gonna ask you if you're the owner of the vehicles that you're driving. They're gonna ask you what you do for a living and possibly how long you're gonna be in the country and when you're planning to return. Now in our experiences, as we're traveling into Canada, the questions beyond those are all about weapons. And as we're coming back into the US, it's all about fruits and veggies. So do what we do and consume everything before you come back into the US and you should be good to go. So make sure you declare what you have when you're crossing the border because if they search your vehicle and find something you didn't declare, you're gonna be inviting some trouble in the form of a delay, fines, confiscation, or maybe refusal to enter the country and send you back home. We hope you all have a great border crossing, safe travels, and we'll see you on the road.